Thank you for joining me today for this final day of our week of prayer. Uh, my assignment today is to share with you on the topic of from doubt to faith. Now, many of you have heard many sermons, many messages on faith, what that means, what it, what we believe about faith. Faith is a, is an essential ingredient for the believer in Christ. In fact, uh, we're we're talking about Praying for boldness to approach God with persistence in prayer. How many times have we gone to the Lord and asked him to do things and our heart was not really in it? Or we weren't even certain that even God could do it. We were struggling. And so that's what we want to talk about today, is asking the Lord to give us boldness. When we come before him, Scripture says to come before him with boldness. And that's with, with the confidence that we know as believers in Christ that we can ask God for things and know that he will do them. Very young uh, in my Christianity, first uh, year or so that I walked with the Lord, I was challenged by uh, the pastor that I was saved under. In fact, just a few days ago, he went to heaven. And so I rejoice that he's with the Lord. But I'm so thankful that he poured into my life as a young man at 14 years old. He also uh, shared the word and blessed my sisters and my mom, and it made an eternal difference in our lives. And one of the key scriptures that we learned, one of the key chapters was Hebrews 11. And many of you know that's called the faith chapter. It goes through and, and documents uh, people like Abraham and Moses and and the patriarchs that went before us in the Old Testament and how they had faith, what they what they were able to do with that faith. And so it was there to encourage us. Hebrews 11.1 1 says it this way in the New Living Translation. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Now, when I read that scripture, uh, I think uh, the original translation, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I, I didn't quite understand that. In fact, as a new believer, I, I really didn't get that. So maybe that's something you struggle with, just like I have. But let me put it this way. We all have dreams. When we're, when we're growing up, we're, we dream of being, I'm going to be a fireman, I'm going to be a teacher, I'm going to be a pro football player, I'm going to be a nurse, I'm going to be a doctor, uh, I'm going to help people. I'm going to do something amazing. You know, th those are called dreams and those are hopes. And as, as children, we come up thinking of well, all these things that we want to do, that's the aspiration, the desire to do something great. And as we mature through life, that becomes more focused and we determine, hey, I want to go in this field because I feel like I, I, I can accomplish great things there and be successful in that way. And so we have dreams and we have hopes. Well, as believers... God gives us those dreams. I believe that. He puts it in our heart. You're not just accidentally prone to move one direction or another. You're not just gifted accidentally. God gives us those things. And because we know that, because he plants the dreams and the hopes in us, then we can know for certain that God uh, will do what he said he'll do. He said he would accomplish that in us that he began. He'll, be, he'll begin a good work. He'll finish it. And so he has plans and purposes for all of us. From the time we are conceived in our mother's womb, God has a plan. He's got his hand on us. And I believe that gives us purpose. That gives us hope. We must learn to see through God's eyes. See what he sees. Uh, I think we'd be scared to death if we could see everything that God sees. But I believe if we can have faith like God sees us, what he sees for us, what he sees can happen through our lives and touching others and 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 sharing the gospel and changing lives. I, I think it would change our perspective totally. It would increase our faith. Uh, going further down in that that chapter, Hebrews eleven verse six, and it says this: and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It's impossible to please God without faith. Now, I know many of us struggle. I know I did 
especially in my younger years, just lack of confidence, believing in myself. It was hard for me uh, to to come to God and and to totally understand. My relationship with my father was okay, but I didn't have that great uh, common ground with my father. I didn't have that closeness, uh, uh, that affection, uh, for whatever reason. We just did not. And so it was a little bit difficult for me to to understand what it meant uh, to have faith in God. And one of the things I always struggled with is I, I wanted to please people. I wanted to be accepted. Uh, I, I wanted to be recognized uh, th that I was important. And so when I came to the Lord, that was one thing that I struggled with. And so I had to learn uh, that my Heavenly Father loved me unconditionally. He believed in me. And so as, as that relationship grew through the years, my faith grew because I knew things were possible. As you know, anyone who wants to come to the Lord, it says it must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So it's kind of like this. No belief, no salvation. We can't even come to the Lord without faith. And so you've already taken a step of faith once you've accepted Christ. So you take that beginning point. As the scripture said, every person is given a portion of faith. In other words, it's in us. It's deposited in us when we come to the Lord because we believed that he is Lord. And, and he can change our lives. And, and so we've been accepted. Several years ago, as a minister of music, I, I was... Uh, honored to, to direct a, a phenomenal choir in one of our, our Assembly of God churches. We had about 40 choir members, phenomenal singers, great people. Well, in that choir, I uh, had a, a, a young lady who had married a guy. Uh, this was her second marriage. And uh, uh, God had done some great things in her life and restored healing in her life from her, the brokenness of her first relationship. So she met this guy, and he was a great guy. Uh, he was he was a, he was an impressive guy. He was six foot five. He was big, and uh, I'm six four, and so he was bigger than me. And so it was, he was an impressive guy, very likable, very kind. But I was so surprised to find out from her and talking, and she would she would ask the choir pray pray for my husband. I want him to come to Christ, and then finally. We talked, and uh, she shared the fact that he he was uh, an avowed atheist. And uh, the amazing thing was, she could still get him to come to church, but he would sit there stone cold. And when an altar call would come, or and the Holy Spirit began to move, I, I watched him white knuckle on the back of a pew many times. But I remember, remember what I said here. It said it's impossible to please God, but if you believe, uh, you must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder and that that you must understand uh, that you gotta believe in him in order to receive his salvation. Well, I watched this six foot five gentleman uh, crumble at an altar because at some point in that service, he believed Jesus was Lord. Maybe you're watching this devotion today and you're saying, you know, I've struggled with that. Well, let me encourage you. It's not that hard. It's easy. Calling on the name of the Lord and just believing. He can change your life. If you never do anything else, take that next step and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are saved, how much more should we believe for more from God? Because He, because we had faith to receive him as Savior. Can you believe him for your healing? Yes, you can. Can you believe him to heal a broken relationship? Absolutely. If he can save you, he can do anything. And I'm here to testify Having lived for the Lord since 1967, I'm telling you it's worth calling on the name of the Lord. He's faithful. He's true. 
Let's take a look at another verse that I think is, is key in, in taking us from doubt to faith, Matthew 18, 19. I also tell you this, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. I can't tell you how many times the Lord is has ministered life to our family, work miracles, brought healing. Several years ago, we had come to work in a, at a church. It was a great church. But uh, we were struggling financially. I mean, we were barely making it. Part of the reason for that is because I had uh, walked in disobedience a couple years before and held uh, some unforgiveness towards a pastor that I worked for previously and the, and the, and it was it was affecting our lives my life spiritually but also my family's and and I believe through those couple of years that I carried that thing that it that it actually carried us down in other ways financially emotionally uh even the relationship in our family was strained as a result but once the healing came, once the restoration came, once God set me free from that and I was able to forgive and healing came to me, it also came to my family. Well, as I said at the beginning of this part, we were struggling financially. I mean, we barely had enough to make it. We were living in an old parsonage behind the church. It was about 50, excuse me, it was about 50 years old and about to fall apart and it smelled bad. It was right behind the church. So you can imagine being there, you you know, constantly at the church. You lived at the church. And we were grateful to have that. But it was a very difficult time. Well, miracle of all miracles, the Lord uh, provided for us a home. A builder came and said, hey, I want to build you a house. And I, and I said, well, we don't have the money. And he said, no, I want, you don't understand. I want to help build that house. And when you get finished, you'll have about $20,000 equity. It won't cost you anything. It was an absolute miracle. So uh, partway through that, we had already begun the construction and had the construction loan. And then it was time to get permanent financing. And so I needed, I think, a couple of thousand dollars. And 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 I, we just didn't have it. We, we didn't know how we were going to make that happen. Uh, an opportunity to step into a house with twenty thousand equity, and and uh, but the lenders wanted a couple thousand dollars, and so we were praying. And I heard a message from my pastor just a few days later, and one key scripture jumped out at me. And when it when when he said that scripture, and funny thing is, it had nothing to do with really the message. It was just one scripture that he read in a passage that was part of his message. But the thing is, the, the Lord said, I have set you in your own land. And when that word came, I knew it was from God. My faith rose. And I went to that property the next day and I took a piece of paper and I scribbled that, that scripture on it. And I found a nail and, and put it over the do door post. It was just framed, framed up at that point. We didn't know if we could finish it. We didn't know we could finance it if it was finished. But I knew when I when God gave that word to me, my faith rose up. And so I marched around that house. Long story short, miraculously, God brought that money to us. We financed the home. We lived in the home. And, and our family was blessed. It, it was a phenomenal story. The reason I share that is... The word of God is alive and well, and your faith will increase as you study his word. As you listen by the spirit, when pastor preaches a message, the Lord may give you that one scripture. He may give you that one word, or, or a friend may come and share a word with you. Uh, you're in study. Some of you are studying uh, with us now as it happened, reading. You're gonna, some of you are going to read through this scripture this year and God's going to point out something that you have a question about or that you're asking him for and that word will come alive in you and faith will rise up in you. 
So the word of God brings faith. It quickens our spirit. So let me encourage you today. In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of financial troubles, in the midst of your family struggling, in the, in the midst of hurt and pain and misunderstanding, God can bring a miracle into your life. He can raise up faith in you so that when you pray, you begin to pray with boldness. God, I believe that you can do exactly what you said you would do. I'm trusting you for healing. I'm trusting you for a financial miracle. I'm trusting you to save my family. Lord, we believe it. We know that you can. So today I want to thank you for joining me, and I trust that you will be encouraged throughout this week of prayer. I hope you've been encouraged, and and, and your faith has risen up even this week uh, to the point that this message is just one more reminder that we can trust God. We serve an awesome God. So I want to pray with you now as we agree together for great things in 2021. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you today because our hope in, is in you. Our help comes from you. We look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. God, you're the shade on a right hand on a hot day. You're our shield and buckler. You're the captain of the host of heaven. There's no God like you. Lord, if we've ever believed, we've ever trusted, we trust in you, we believe in you, then in 2021, Lord, we're going to see miracles, lives saved, hearts changed, financial miracles, Lord, uh, uh, buildings rising up where there was no building, Families healed where there was where they were splintered previously. Lord, we believe you for miracles. Thank you, Father, for blessing the Life Church family. Thank you for healing through us, Lord. Thank you for saving others through us. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to love our community. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to support our missionaries, to pray for them and provide financial assistance to them to do the work that you call them to do. Lord, we're believing for great things. Thank you for our pastor uh, and, and Missy, Lord. Thank you for their leadership and how they carefully watch over this flock. Thank you, Father, for blessing our pastors today. Thank you, Lord, for blessing our leaders, Lord, that we would carefully follow the Holy Spirit. And Lord, our faith would rise up as we agree with our pastors, Lord, for greater things than we've ever seen, greater things than we've ever believed for. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. May your faith be increased. May you become bolder than ever before by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.